Welcome to Data Science with R. In this tutorial, we're going to be covering basic data types and data structures, although this is going to be broken up into a few videos. We can pretty much skip over the contents because the title says it all. Let's go ahead and start off with data types. Just to cover some of the basic data types, the first four here out of five, those are what we call atomic data types. So in R, the atomic data types are really the smallest building blocks. So those atomic data types are numeric, integer, logical, and character. If we look at the table on the left, the numeric type, some of those look deceptively like integers. And then the integer may look a little funny with the capital L appended onto the end of each of those. But the numeric data type, R interprets anything you pass in that is a number by default as a floating point value. So it'll consider the seven or the two, three, five, seven here in this example, to be uh, numeric or float, floating point values instead of integers. Whereas with the integer, what we're gonna do is append an L onto the end of these to tell R that it is in fact the data type integer rather than the numeric or floating point types. In some cases, especially when filling out large vectors, you don't want to append L onto the end of everything. So we'll see one way in order to uh, cast these into actual integers. So if you were to fill in a whole vector, you could put the integers and then just tell it that it, it's data type is integer for the whole thing. All right, and then there's the logical or also known as Boolean types. And those just take on two values, true and false. You can see here that for R, both of these are all caps, whereas in Python, only the first letter on each of them are capitalized. And these things are typically used, these things being the logical data types, they're used for comparisons in order to do logic. So they generally arise from uh, either testing or comparing values. And then the character data type itself also can be a little deceptive. You would assume that, say, in the string that says apple, that each one of those are characters on their own, and then the larger piece is a string. Yes, it is a string, so to speak, uh, but R considers all of these to have the data type of character, both higher and lower level data types. And then the last one here that isn't exactly atomic, although um, most of you also will not be using these, are complex numbers. So complex numbers are comprised of two components, the real component and the imaginary component. If you recall from math classes, the imaginary component is just the square root of negative one. So one i would be one times the square root of negative one. And the square root of, negative of a negative number is an imaginary number. And so in this example, we have one plus two i. So that is just the real component of one plus uh, the imaginary component of two i. So we'll see how to work with those just very briefly, but we're not gonna cover them in much detail since most people will not be using them. Data structures, simply put, are just ways to store and organize data inside of R. Not necessarily ways to, but there are objects that are constructed in order to store and organize data in R. There are six primary data structures, and we're gonna be taking a close look at five of these, and that would be vector, list, matrix, array, data frame, and then there's the sixth, which is factor, and that's just going to get a brief mention, but we're not really going to be looking at those right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to our studio. So get that open, and we're going to take a look at the code for handling all of these different data types and structures. You'll want to open the data types.r file that came with this tutorial. That is assuming you want to follow along and run the code. Otherwise, it'll be just a nice reference later because there are plenty of comments in here that'll help you to uh, grasp or remember any details that you may have missed or forgotten. We're gonna start with the basic data types and then we're gonna move on to the data structures section. So let's work through these in order. We're gonna start with the numeric type and we're gonna start off with something extremely basic just for illustration purposes and really we don't need to go too in depth with the numeric data type anyway. Here we're just going to assign x equal 1.5 and we're gonna check the class and type of for x. The class will give us its higher level type and then type of gives us a lower level data type. So we're gonna see that here in just a moment. We have a couple options for running 
any of the code that we see in this script file. We can either place our cursor on a particular line and hit control enter and that'll run just the line that we were on. So it is now assigned x equal 1.5 and we can see on the upper right here that our global environment now contains x and its value is 1.5. Alternatively, we can highlight multiple lines and hit command enter or command return. And so now we have run the class x and we can see that it is that its higher level type is numeric and then type of gives us the lower level type of double, so it is a double precision floating point number. And just to illustrate something that I said in the slides, that the default computational data type in R is numeric rather than this assuming it's an integer, we're going to assign x equal one and we're gonna check the both higher and lower level types. So let's go ahead and highlight all of these, hit command enter, so we see now that x is equal to one. Even though we didn't add a decimal to this, it is still numeric and still type double. Uh, there's actually one thing I realized as I was going through it, that in the slides, I believe I mentioned that if we were to print out this x equal one, if we were to print that out, that it, we would see a decimal. We actually don't, I shouldn't have said that. So just to illustrate how we do not, we still have a one no decimal, but it doesn't mean that it is an integer as we have already seen here. Speaking of integers, let's go ahead and move on to those because floating point numbers or numeric data types are extremely straightforward. Uh, although there's one thing that I'll mention real quick about the numeric types is we have a nice built-in pi variable here in R. So this gives us the irrational value for pi. So let's just type that in the console and hit enter. And we can see that we have 3.141593. So we just have this nice approximation of pi. Okay, so we've already seen in the slides this kind of strange looking L that we append to the end of an integer if we want to tell R that it is an integer and not numeric data type. So we can assign L or we'll sign to w, 3l, and that'll just give us the type integer. And one other method is to actually explicitly cast a value to integer. So here we have as.integer, we're gonna pass in one. So x is already equal to one, but it's currently of type numeric. So we're gonna tell it that it's an integer. So on this line, we're just gonna hit command enter. And so now we have x is that. Let's go ahead and check the data types here. So we have type of for w and type of for x, and we can see that they're both integer. And you may be curious about the class for these since all I did was print out the type of. So just to satisfy anybody's curiosity, let's run class x and we can see that it is also integer. So for these, there's no difference between the lower and higher level data types. That's because across the board, they're just integers. They don't have any particular precision because they don't have any decimals. And then we can also cast our value of pi as an integer. And when we do that, let's go ahead and just run both of these lines. So when we do that, what it does is it truncates any decimals that are on our floating point number. So it just gives us whatever value comes before the decimal. As one more illustration, let's do something else, uh, like say one, two, three, four, dot five. We can see that we get, again, everything before the decimal. So here, we're just gonna say is integer or is dot integer for w and x. So these will return our logical types, which are Boolean, which we're going to move on to right after this. So let's go ahead and check that out. We'll just run command enter on each of these, and we can see that is integer w and x both return true, so they're both integers. And moving on. <sighs> All right, so now let's take a look at logical. These are the Boolean data, are logical or Boolean data types. We already have values of x and y, so let's go ahead and print those out, and we can see down here at the bottom, x prints first, because that's the one we wrote first. 
So we have x is 1 and y is 3, and those are both integers. But let's just do this comparison here, this logical comparison. This one is basically saying x is equal to y, or x is exactly equal to y, so that's going to be true or false. And obviously we expect that to be false because 1 is not equal to 3. So let's run that line, and as expected we get false. And then with x less than y we get true. And so logical data types, um, they're again pretty basic, but we can see a number of different things here. So let's go ahead and set A to true and B to false, just so we can look at logical comparisons or logical operators. So we have A true, B false, we'll run that. And the first one we're going to look at is negation of A and negation of B. So this exclamation mark, or some people call it bang, this that comes right before A or B, B is just going to give us the negation or the opposite of this. So negation A would return false and negation B would return true, each of those the opposites. So let's run this line and we can see that now for negation A we have false and negation B is true, just as expected. And then we have the OR comparison here. So this is basically going to return a true false based on whether or not A or B. So Either A or B has to be true for this to return true. So it's essentially just answering the question, is A or B true? And so in this case, we would expect a true because we have one of them is true. So as expected, we get true. And for the AND, that is the ampersand here. And by the way, this vertical bar here is called the pipe. And typically you can find that just above the return key which is on the same key as the backslash. So all you have to do is shift and type where the backslash key is and you'll get that vertical pipe for the or. And then the ampersand is our and, and this will be answering the question, is both A and B true? And since we have B is false, then this should return false. So we'll run that line and we can now see here that indeed it returned false. Okay, so one thing that we can actually do is convert between integer and our Boolean or logical values. And it's pretty straightforward. One represents true and zero represents false. But let's just do this as integer true. And we can see that the output is a one. And same thing for false, the output is a zero. Or similarly, not the same thing. And then we can convert zero and one into logical. So we have as dot logical one will give us a true and as dot logical zero will give us a false. So again, the uh, Boolean or logical data types are very easy to use. And I should say though that while they're very easy to use, you may run into some things in the future where uh, the kind of Boolean logic can get a bit complex, but that's no big deal. You will definitely build up to that in your experience. Okay, the next thing we want to take a look at is the character data type. And this has a lot of different operations we can work with. Strings or the character data types, we'll take a look at a few of them.